In a world of boring talk, misinformation, and mindless chatter, two superheroes emerge from the asses. Ashes. Ben, is this asses or ashes? Bring the action. Happy hour with Ben and Alexander. Pull up a chair. Raise a glass. Enjoy it in the chat. (laughs) It's talk radio with jazz hands. Oh my God, you had to say that. (laughs) All eyes on us. Thanksgiving, Some history yeah, to your Thanksgiving. Right? We have the crooner who's keeping the uh, Crosby legacy alive, Phil Crosby Jr. Okay, this is, is nuts. amazing. This, is, this blows my mind. It, it blows my mind. Uh, grandson of Bing Crosby, and we're going to talk about his Christmas CD. Mm-hmm. You know how bored we get with Christmas music because you can only listen to can, Coast 103.5 so many times. I don't get bored with it. I love it. But then all you hear is Celine going, Turkey, and some fish. <laughs> so we have. Time for Christmas, which is on iTunes. Mm-hmm. It's on CD Baby, um, and it has all, all, all the best ones. Uh, so we're talking to CD. He's going to perform live. I know. That's crazy. So then, you know, I like to collect Hollywood and things. Then. And then. <laughs> so I have this picture. This is actually. This hanging in his bedroom. This, this picture hangs in his bedroom. It's such a small world. This is Bing Crosby. Yes. And it is my grandfather. Yes. Which is, I mean, and then we have Bing Crosby's grandson here. I mean, it's. Oh, oh, oh. So they're probably up and having having a drink or two, or a little chat. knowing my grandfather five. Hey, so well, well. <laughs> Phil Crosby's keeping the crooning alive. I'm keeping the vodka <laughs> drinking. Let's drink them all, buddy. By the way, there's uh, there's something I've been meaning to talk to you about, uh, and I don't know whether to mention it on the air or not. Yeah. Oh, well, go ahead. I'm glad you came to me instead of Dear Abby. What is? It? <laughs> Do you really think that swing is here to stay for Mr. Crosby? All right, you crazy cats. Here we go. We are. Gower Studios here in the heart of Hollywood. The boys of Happy Hour are proud to present the crooner that's keeping the Crosby legacy alive, Phil Crosby Jr. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's going on? How are you? I'm great. How are you? We are brilliant. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, it's a joy. <laughs> it is such an honor. Um, uh, to, ha- to have you on the show, I mean, talk about your Christmas music. It's so it's so timely right now because mm. um, you really are, are uh, currently paying an homage to your grandfather. Yes. Um, and you drive everywhere. The Christmas music everywhere. There's the iconic, there's the White Christmas, mm-hmm. which sold, I don't know, I mean, it's set records for, for yeah. how many recordings. Um, and so to have you and then to know what you've done with your career and, and what you're doing now, it's so, um, it's it's surreal. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it really, really is. Um, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> You guys are very. You guys are great. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> God. Um, I did not know that your grandfather, Bing Crosby, actually uh, paved the way with a lot of uh, uh, techn- technological. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, in terms of radio broadcast. That's right. Um, which we didn't even know. It's like, I mean, there's such a great um, synergy. Yeah, yeah it's like an amazing story. Actually, it's got uh, a little World War II like yes. history mm-hmm. in it, and uh, also um, Silicon Valley was kind of based wow. on that company, Ampex. Uh, and he, p- you know, he put a lot of money into it, but he was also kind of uh, integral in, in, in that technology moving from one place to another. That's so, crazy. yeah, yeah. Well, and even some of the stuff that he did for some of the pre-records or when he had to do, um, you know, do it the East Coast time and then again on the West Coast time. Right. Some of the stuff he developed is are, are things uh, directorially that we use in movies today, such as uh, time scheduling and all this kind of stuff. That's right. I had no idea. Um, well, and for well, you, go ahead, go ahead. Well, I mean, it, he was the first to admit it was just because he was kind of like lazy. He didn't want to <laughs> like work. He was big. He didn't, you know. And, but yet they were still holding him to this this radio live radio schedule, you know, which just really like messed with his golf game. <laughs> so uh, you know, he moved to heaven and earth and uh, did made it happen for himself. I mean, have you always? I mean, of course, be, being the grandson and and you're you're in kind of engulfed in it all. But has it always the industry kind of fascinated you as well? Well, you know, I, I kind of went through a little re- re- rebel <laughs> stage. My mother got me into acting when I was a little kid, so mm-hmm. I was driving eight all years old, right? Yeah, yeah, I was driving all around this town, going to you know interviews or auditions, and uh, and you know seeing all these kids, kind of bratty sometimes, the showbiz moms, you know, and that kind of put me uh, off it actually wow. for quite a while. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then after high school, I just kind of became this kind of like. Uh, anti-establishment guy and I traveled all over the world and uh, you know but I at the all always I was into music right but it wasn't you know it was it was quite a while before I thought like well you know I'd like to uh, you know be part of the big the big showbiz mm-hmm. and it's 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 great it's 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 interesting it's never boring <laughs> so I get to meet great guys like y'all right on I'll <laughs> take that we'll take that <laughs> um, but you actually had a rock band when you were 
a teenager, you kind of went that route when you really rebelled. You were like, I did, yes. I did. Oh yeah, I was. I thought I was a Jim Morrison. Really, I had like a long hair <laughs> and a beard, and uh, just yeah, well, it was it was fun, you know. But it, it's so different from what I do now, you know. Back then, you could just have a beer and bang your head, and that was called uh, <laughs> stage presence. <laughs> And I have that share. very often. <laughs> I have that stage presence <laughs> nightly. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's a bit more required now. But I, I also appreciate that challenge that was good. Right on. Mm -hmm. uh, and from that, you kind of went uh, down uh, like the country path, and you kind of learned like Nashville. Yeah, I did. Well, my mother's from Nashville, and my actually Bing's wife, my grandmother Dixie, Dixie uh, Lee, was from Nashville. Uh, well, is, she it was from uh, Knoxville. It's such both a beautiful Tennessee. area down there. Yeah, so beautiful. And in fact, your um, your dad started a country music album That's or a uh, label. record label yep. based after or named after Dixie. Named, yeah, Dixie Lee Records. Yeah, he did a few good like country tunes. I'll I'll probably do some country tunes again nice. pretty soon. But uh, yeah, you know, I started playing guitar kind of late. I think it was you know in my mid twenties. Oh wow! And it was uh, it was really great to you know play some kind of simple like rock and roll. You know, because I I just sang with a rock and roll band after high school. So I got a guitar. I started, to, you know, I was really into folk, kind of like the old kind of folk and, you know, Johnny Cash. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, Bob Dylan. Woody Guthrie was a big hero of mine. And <laughs> I know it's about as far. And, and to think that, the, like, Woody Guthrie and my grandfather were really contemporaries, that, that one blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I love them both. You know? Absolutely. It's like my right? two, two sides of me, I guess. But that's, I mean, that's <clears throat> kind of how music works. I know that you truly have to understand all facets of it. I oh, believe. sure, yeah. sure. Yeah. And knowing different types of genres like really helps you with the foundation of being a true musician. I'm the kind of musician that I'm very musical theater. I need to see mm -hmm. the notes, and mm -hmm. I need my intro, and I need my outro, and I need my jazz hands. Right. And like Ben is a very kind of like pop kind of <laughs> uh, you know type. Mm -hmm. But you have to be good at all different genres to really be a consummate m musician. I think it all kind of percolates together, and and it kind of makes you yeah it, to help to find your own voice. People are always saying you got to find your own voice artistically and whatnot. And yeah, it helps to have a lot of a lot of roots and foundation there. So in going back and honoring your grandfather and kind of singing songs for the American Great American Songbook, how do you uh, maintain your individual voice? Obviously, everybody's like, okay, well, let's see what this kid's got, right? Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a lot of pressure, <coughs> I would think. Well, you know, I don't sound a lot like my grandfather. <laughs> so, and, and you know, I mean, I sound a little bit like him, and I've learned a lot from his, his technique and his style. But I think it's because I have, like, this rock and roll kind of uh, foundation that people don't go, like, well, he's very derivative, or, well, he right. just looks like he's trying to do yeah. the old man's thing. or try And there's so many, like, very Sinatra-like singers today. And so, I, I, you know, I, I'm kind of separate from them, too. I'm not really just kind of trying to be that Rack Pack guy and that, that Sinatra guy. So, um, yeah, it all just kind of works out. I'm, and I'm my own person. It just kind of <laughs> it can't be avoided. Not everybody likes it, but, you know. <laughs> but that's, that's perfectly right. perfectly okay. Right. Um, and your, your dad uh, had the opportunity to perform uh, with, with Bing, too. He was part with his brothers. They were part of uh, a, a singing group. Oh, yeah. Group. Well, before Bing's second family, uh, my father and my uncles were all on the Christmas specials, and they all sang when they were little, and they all had great voices. Um, and then they all they went on to have a, a, a band together, or a group, uh, the, the Crosby Boys, and then it became the Crosby Brothers. I think my dad and my Uncle Gary had a fist fight backstage, <laughs> and Gary was gone. Oh, so, and, um, and then your dad kind of said, well, let's do a show at the Hollywood Palace, and it was a great <laughs> show. Right, right. Yeah, those, uh, that's a classic look moment, those Hollywood Palaces, yeah. Well, and it, it's – when you heard the last name Crosby around Christmas time, I mean, every every it holds such a special part. I mm -hmm. think in everyone's heart and everyone's. I mean, it's it's such a magical moment. I mean, yeah. How does that? How do you feel about that? I get a lot of phone calls at the Christmas time. <laughs> like, I just heard your grandpa. I'm at the mall. I get phone calls from the mall. I'm You're like, like okay, you don't well, say. Well, great. <laughs> buy me something. Man. Exactly right. Buy my CD. Yeah. Buy my CD. <laughs> buy my CD. Walk over to the. Uh, no. uh, well, it's great. Yeah, it's great to get the uh, the extra uh, you know attention. I mean, there was a time where i was like oh you know i don't want to sing white christmas right. and, but I, I do i came out with a, a christmas cd and i don't i don't do it every year but I'll, some years i'll do a christmas show mm -hmm. the, the last one i did actually was a couple christmases ago and it was a comedy christmas oh, right on. yeah it was kind of like well i called it cosmic christmas because it was 2012 <laughs> and i had like this um it was kind of like a, a comedian who does this kind of guru kind of thing where he puts on this little fake mustache and wears these robes <laughs> like a german guru like from germany yeah. And he did just Germans just, are hilarious. Yes, oh, they are. <laughs> Except when they're not. I mean, well, no, Except people, when they're not. Pe people, people pretending to be Germans. That's hilarious. Yeah, exactly. That is, that is that's, true. That's, that is yeah, very that's true. true. That's really good. And he did a whole new agey kind of thing, like you know, naked yoga, and you know, uh, you know, it's just a real kind of sex guru kind of. And that was pretty funny. So that was fun. Right that was on. the theme of that year. Right on. What Bing Crosby did with his voice, like he really paved the way for like Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin. And to your point, you know, of, of trying to find your voice, Bing just, just, he 
like he was very laid back and everything. There's a YouTube clip. It's actually about 15 minutes long, and it's Bing Crosby's top 50 songs, and it has a little section and some footage actually, and all of them are just like he didn't break a sweat. He didn't get yeah. out of his chair. He was like, Bleh. the road to the, the road to films, the musical yeah. films with Bob <coughs> Hope. I mean, you could watch these films over and over and over. Mm-hmm. Were you introduced at a very young age to these films, or did you rediscover him later after your re- rebellious? No, age? actually, uh, I don't want to say how old I was, but I can <laughs> remember when I was little. There was no cable channels and right. whatnot. So, excuse me, daytime, and also I was a typical American kid. So we like I like to watch TV during the daytime. And you know, you got up early enough, you got to watch the Little Rascals, <laughs> and then like a road picture would kick in after that. Yeah. And that was you know because I was a baby when my my grandfather was born. I mean, died. Excuse me. <laughs> And so I didn't really get to meet him, and uh, I, I, he saw pictures of me, and he wrote letters uh, to my mother and I. But um, yeah, so that was kind of that's how I did grow up with him, actually. You wow, know? wow! Yeah. And I love those road pictures. Yeah, I think does that, it? Might, that might have influenced some of my traveling because I, I had my own adventures actually out there. So it was cool. That's awesome. I yeah. like that. Yeah. When is your book going to come out? <laughs> you know, I sh- I need to remember everything that I've done, and I'll write it down. <laughs> You could even do a musical. I could play you. It'd be oh, okay. God. Oh, really? Right. Cool. Really? Cool. You're casting yourself already? So what kind of music do you listen to today? Like, if I were to get in a car with you, what do you have on the radio? What's in your CD player or what your iPod? Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I'm, I'm spending a lot of time listening to the great singers because I get the most from that. Um, mm-hmm. I like uh, a singer named Johnny Hartman, who's a, a great vocalist. Mm-hmm. Um, I, you know, I, I listen to all the guys. I love Sammy Davis Jr. Right. Um, you know, I love uh, Frank Sinatra and my grandfather, uh, but I, I, I also listen to I still listen to a little bit of heavy metal, uh, a little funkadelic. I love like P funk, Parliament funk. <laughs> right on, yeah. Like so I'm pretty eclectic that way. You know, I might, you know, I might be listening. I, actually, if you, I, I broke my iPod, but when I had it, <laughs> I had a great shuffle where you could end up. It could go to Judy Garland or Judas Priest just I as easily, that. which I is really that. weird. But you know, that's whatever. music. That's yeah. that's how it goes. Dang it. Uh, so what do you have coming up? What what can we go see of it? Well, I'm going to be at the Cicada. I, I perform regularly at the Cicada Club. That's in the Oviat building downtown. Mm-hmm. Tell, tell our listeners who might not be familiar, this place is it's stunning. It's, it's one of the most amazing gems of Los Angeles. It's literally walking back in it, time. It is. It's a historical landmark and was built in the 20s, and it's been oh, wow. uh, kept up. And sometimes it was private. And now it's a, it's a club, a dinner club. They have great dinners there. Um, but, yeah, it, it was all done Art Deco. The, full, the front of it was done by the glass by Tiffany and Company. Uh, they have an old-fashioned elevator with oh. a little elevator person. Everybody, all the staff wears like vintage clothes. People wow. come dressed vintage and they swing dance. And uh, a lot of I, I love working there because I've I've gotten to, into a whole new kind of world of of people and and musicians. So now I'm working with a lot of like really old-timey, early '30s. Awesome. You know, actually they do a lot of like 1920s stuff. I don't do the oh, 20s wow. stuff, but oh. but um like I do a lot of my grandfather's early early '30s hits, which is really what I always wanted to do when I first started singing jazz i ended up with kind of like more modern kind of jazz guys who were great and we did a lot of like you know night and day and you know can't get a you know like get a kick out of you whatever and uh but i always wanted to do these really really old tunes but a lot of the, the musicians they weren't really familiar with them and these guys i work with now are like they just know it all they know they know all the stuff that i don't know actually yeah. with, with some of the original charts and 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 th- things like that um and going to meet these people like hanging out with them it's like oh god I love your costume, and they look at you like costume. No, like, right. We no. were just talking about this. Like people really live. They live their art. It's a way absolutely. of life. I, what I can't believe is the the women with their hair. I mean, like they got to spend a lot of time on that. <laughs> it's it curls, and it's all <laughs> yes, sets, and they got it all going on. I love that stuff. Um, I did not know that Bing Crosby, uh, as an actor, is is the third most popular actor. He's behind uh, Clark Gable mm. and uh, John Wayne in terms of uh, oh, wow. movie ticket uh, sold. sales. Yeah, or s- wow, quite an accomplishment for a guy who was actually the biggest uh, musician singer of his yeah. time, really. Um, and in 1948, he was uh, America's favorite man. Yeah, and yeah. he did a lot of um, uh, military work in, in terms mm-hmm. of uh, visiting USO. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he, he uh, and then in those days they really well they still do, but they you know he went really he went, went behind enemy lines accidentally once. I don't know. Whoopsie, if you know that's no, I didn't. Yeah, well he just got a, a jeep driver and said let's go let's go look at the countryside, and they got lost, and then they came back and they said well we were in this French town, and then the the, the brass were like oh well you were behind enemy lines. <laughs> no, he said we haven't even taken that town yet, and he said well today we did today for a minute. And that's that, nuts. Yeah. that's crazy. And he was probably like. Right. <laughs> Let's grab a drink. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? If they would have ca- if the if the Germans would have captured him, they'd have treated him like a million bucks. They yeah. loved. Actually, they called him Der Bingle. They loved. They really? Listened. Yeah. And he he was kind of like a Hanoi Jane. He he sent pro democracy radio uh, shows wow. over 
but they they didn't really hold it against him. They loved him. I mean, he was a white man, so right. he, right. he's already right. in their in their camp a little bit. But uh, yeah, they loved him. They're bingo. They loved uh, they loved crazy. his stuff. Yeah, that's crazy. Do you think coming from such a well known Holly, Hollywood family has 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 helped you, or do you think it's hindered you? It's a it's a double edged sword in the sense. I mean, it's definitely helped me. I, I'm not sure that I would be. You know, I mean, the music business is is tough, and it's getting getting tougher. Right. And and I did leave that band years ago. I left Los Angeles, and I said, you know, I don't want to pay to play. I don't. You know, this yep. is just not. It's kind of like you know, if it's if it if it was just something like you either make it or you're gonna starve to death for the rest of your life. It just didn't sound right. really good. And this, uh, what I like, well, also jazz music. It's not just the fact that I'm a Crosby, but jazz music is really nice for someone. You can get older and you get better. You know, look at Tony Bennett. Absolutely. So um, he's like 205 now. I think. Stop. <laughs> it, it's been, but it's been a you know, I've had to really work, you know, bring my game up. You know, when I first started, I, I tell you the truth, I thought it would be easy. I thought, well. Uh, mostly I wanted to travel. I loved I'm a huge travel bug. So uh, this this drummer I got in touch with, he used to work in Japan. He was like, you know, uh, spoke Japanese. And he said, oh, you know, we'll, we'll put some songs together, and boom, we're going to be working in J Japan. Well, it wasn't that easy, you know, because I found out that this, this stuff is actually not easy to sing, especially coming from country music and rock and roll. you got to change everything. Yeah. And it's, it's, it was easier for people that grew up living listening to that music all the right. time. Everybody sang in a more classical kind of proper way with a very open – well, we, I, you know, I grew up listening to a lot of like whale and blues and rock and roll, which is it's a just different style. Chords are all over the place. Mm -hmm. Back there, there was a certain chord progression yeah. that you knew vocally where it should yeah. fit. And even what you do physiologically, you know, you're right. more open. And like that's why Bing was so good. He was so relaxed that that it just it just came out perfect, you know. But uh, which I, you know, it's a really great lesson for anybody that wants to sing. Is you know, it's that really that confidence. I mean, it, of course, you got to learn the, some of your stuff. You know, not everybody just kind of picks everything up immediately, but. Um, yeah, I, I, it took a while. It really did. A lot of people were like, mm. in fact, I was even wrote about in the newspapers. Well, he sounds more like Willie Nelson than his grandfather, you know. And I was like, oh, that stings a little bit. I'm not <laughs> sure if that's like normal. But I, I love that though. When you get a different take, I mean, nobody wants to hear an imitation of right. something. At least I didn't say he's trying to sound like. It. Yeah. So th th right. th kudos to that. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, what do you think th the future of, of music is going now with auto tune? And I don't know if you caught the uh, AMAs, like who's who's popular now. Where where do you think uh, vocally people are going? I mean, before you used to have to be able to sing to to have a career. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, we had some really amazing pop singers, you know, Whitney Houston right. and you know Michael Jackson mm -hmm. and stuff. And I'm not sure that it's going in that direction. But you know what? It, it's cyclical. It'll it'll come around, you know. S and and there's. I mean, I'm not totally against like things like uh, American Idol or whatnot because no, you know, you've got no, a lot no. of people really, really working on their thing and bringing their game up and really learning what it's about. So um, I don't. Know, I mean, I'm not. I'm not like pessimistic. I don't necessarily like iTunes. I always feel it, you know, it, a lot of and a lot of what's being produced today by the big guys are like kind of. To me, it does sound like someone's been messing with the speaker or something. Yeah, it really <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know what? If, 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 if people enjoy it, my, my thing is, you know, you're a successful performer if, if someone is enjoying what you're doing, and that's all that really matters. Well, that is true. My mom will be there front row. No matter <laughs> <what>. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, go to iTunes and get Time for Christmas. It literally has all your uh, favorites for Have Yourself a Merry Little Christmas, uh, Baby It's Cold Outside, Oh Holy Night, White Christmas, Little Drummer Boy. Um, oh, P.S., your, <laughs> your grandfather's singing Little Drummer Boy with Sting. It's so funny because no, he's like – Bowie, Bowie. Bowie, 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 Bowie sorry. sorry. I and get him mixed up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then <laughs> Bing is kind of like, who's this guy? <laughs> right, right. It cracks me up. Watch <laughs> the video on YouTube. It's hilarious. Uh, where can listeners uh, find you? Well, okay, so I'll be uh, December 7th. I'm at the Cicada Club with Richard Halpern's mm -hmm. Hollywood Cavalcade. That's going to be a great yeah, evening. That's yeah. going to be really, really great. He always puts on a great show. And that's It'll like old-time yeah, yeah. Old stuff. And then again on December 17th with the Johnny Holiday program. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And you're going to stick around and perform a little something at the end of the Live. Yes. 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 And go to, to philcrosby.com. Uh, that's right, my website, philcrosby.com. It's I'm a great website, and there's some family pictures there. We've actually been playing some yeah. of them yeah. uh, during and the interview. I'm always open for friends on Facebook, so Phil Crosby Jr., come find me on there, too. Right on, guys. Excellent. All right, make sure you stick around for, for his live performance at the end of the show. Some of these days, you're going to be so lonely. Some of these days, you're going to miss me, honey. Going to miss my loving gonna miss my kissing you'll be so sorry when i'm away <clears throat> well you're gonna be lonely just for me only and you know honey you've had your way and when you leave me 
You know it's gonna grieve me. You're missing little daddy, sweet little daddy, some of these days. Where you gonna be lonely? Just for me only. Cause you know, honey, you've had your way. And when you leave me, you know it's gonna grieve me. You'll miss your little daddy, sweet little daddy, miss your little daddy, your sweet little daddy, miss your little daddy, sweet little daddy, some of these days. A little rusty. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank you so thank you much. much. Awesome. Thank you. PhilCrosby.com, uh, get time for Christmas. That was so- Thank you.